We're going to be reading quite a number of scripture today. But I didn't want to jump too many because it made sense together. Let's open our Bibles to the book of 2 Kings 3. I will read from verse 1 to 27. But I'll jump one or two verses. But you may put that down when you're doing your own private study. You can go through. And I know that the Holy Spirit will reveal more to you. By the help of the Holy Spirit, I have titled my message, The Greatest Blood of All. The Greatest Blood of All. Now let us read. Now Jehoram, the son of Ahab, began to reign over Israel in Samaria. The 18th year of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, and he reigned 12 years. I go to verse 4. And Misha, king of Moab, was a shipmaster and read out unto the king of Israel an hundred thousand lambs and an hundred thousand rams with the wool. But it came to pass when Ahab was dead that the king of Moab rebelled against the king of Israel. Verse 7. And he went out and said to Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, saying, The king of Moab had rebelled against me. Will thou go with me against Moab to battle? And he said, I will go up. I am as thou art, and my people as thy people, and my horses as thy horses. Verse 9. So the king of Israel went, and the king of Judah, and the king of Edom, the three kings, and they fetched a compass of seven days' journey, and there was no water for the host and for the cow, the cattle that followed them. And the king of Israel said, Alas, that the Lord has called these three kings together to deliver them unto the hand of Moab. But Jehoshaphat said, Is there not a prophet of the Lord? Somebody says, Is there not a prophet of the Lord? Is there not a prophet of the Lord that we may inquire of the Lord by him? And one of the king of Israel's servants answered and said, Here is Elisha, the son of Shaphat, which poured water on the hands of Elijah. Verse 14. And Elijah said unto them, As the Lord of hosts liveth, before whom I stand, surely were it not that I regard the presence of Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, I will not look towards thee, nor see thee, verse 16. And he said, God says the Lord, make this valley full of ditches, verse 18. But it is but a light thing in the sight of the Lord, for he will deliver the Moabite also into your hand. And ye shall smite every fenced city, and every choice city shall fell every good tree, and stop all wells of water, and every good piece of land with stones. And it came to pass in the morning. Somebody said it came to pass. When the prophet speaks, it comes to pass. And it came to pass in the morning when the meat offering was offered, that behold, there came water by the way of Edom. And the country was filled with water. Verse 21. And when all the Moabites heard that the kings were come up to fight against them, they gathered all that were good and were able to put on armor and stood at the border. And then they rose up early in the morning and the sun shone upon the water. And the Moabites saw the water on the other side as red as blood. And they said, this is blood. The kings are surely slain and they have smitten one another. Now therefore, Moab, let's go to the spoils. And when they came to the camp of the Israelites, the Israelites stood up and smote the Moabites so that they fled before them. But they went forward smiting the Moabites, even in their country. And they beat down the cities. And on every good piece of land cast every man his stone and filled it. And they stopped all the wells of water. And they fell all the good trees. Even in Ka, Haraset, they left no stone unturned. How bet even the slingers went about it and smote it. Somebody say prophecy fulfilled. These were three kings who came together to fight a certain group of people known as the Moabites because they had stopped bringing tributes that was meant for the king of Israel. And so this king of Israel said, I have two friends. Let me speak to my friends. Probably they will go with me so that I may defeat the Moabites. And then on the course of their journey, they became a little bit stranded. There was no water for them to drink. 
the animals were beginning to starve. And one of them asked, is there no prophet around? And one of the servants of the king said, there is Elisha, let us go and see him. And they went and they saw Elisha. Elisha told them that they were going to be victorious. They were going to conquer the Moabites. They were going to take dominion of all the city and of all the plain that the Moabites occupied. And this prophecy came to pass. But there was something that shocked me. As the prophecy was about to be fulfilled in totality, the king of Moabite took his own first son and gave it as a burnt offering to his God. And the three kings, as powerful as they were, ran away because of a blood sacrifice of one man sacrificing another human being. See, there is a lot of you seated here. Every time they say, praise God, give him worship. You should lie down. You should crawl. You should kneel. Because you cannot count the number of blood sacrifice that has been done on your behalf. Some people that are looking at you and smiling. They, you know, I see this meme all the time and I laugh. They are smiling and looking at you. Not because they are happy with you. But because they are shocked you survived all of the blood sacrifices. Can I get a witness in this place? In Africa and in all parts of the world, the higher the offering they believe, the greater the results of what it is that they are seeking. And so most times they will kill humans, they will kill chickens, they will kill goats, they will kill all sorts of things for whatever reason. But today you are here to partake of the blood that is greater than any other blood that has ever been sacrificed against you. In fulfillment of prophecy, you must understand that even when you do not know who you are, the enemy knows who you are. Even when you underestimate yourself like the three kings did and they ran away because they saw that a man has sacrificed his son. They cut their own prophecy short as given by a prophet because of fear. Because of intimidation. Because of an inferior blood sacrifice. Tell your neighbor inferior. In fulfillment of prophecy, different sacrifices, evil sacrifices might be made against you. Altars from your father's house will rise up against you. Altars from your mother's house will rise up against you. In fact, the battle gets hotter the closer you are to being fulfilling destiny. And we must never forget that. That even though you do not see it, there are things that is happening at the background, but God is still keeping you because prophecy and assignment must be fulfilled upon your life. God needs you to do what only he can use you to do. If you, have, if you have been made the transformer of your family, you must stand regardless of any contrary blood sacrifice. You, you, you limit yourself when you go and partake of certain sacrifices after all that Jesus has done for you. Every other blood is inferior. That's why anything that they've done against you, as you partake of this communion today, whatever it is that has been done is hereby nullified. As long as you take it with understanding, you're not partaking of this precious blood and you're becoming like the king of Judah, the king of Israel, the king of Edom. And you are thinking of your problem that is waiting for you at home. Everybody has problems. Tell your neighbor, everybody has problems. The difference is what you see out of the problem. You can see a beautiful rose flower. You can decide to concentrate on the beauty of that beautiful red rose. Or you may decide to concentrate on the tongues that is on that same red rose. What is beautiful to you might be something that is of a heartache to another person. I will concentrate on the flower and I will hold the tongues, though it spite me, but I will remember what Paul the Apostle said. We must be wise, lest he takes advantage of us. We must be wise, lest the devil takes advantage of us and cuts the fulfillment of prophecy over our lives. They got a little bit of victory and they were excited. 
And then when he came to, to the bus stop of getting everything, they decided to run away. What are you running away from? Not every dream, not every goal that you share with people. Do, you know, some of you, you limit your own self because you are waiting for self-acceptance of other people. When God has spoken, he has indeed spoken. And when the battles come, remember, someone died to give you redemption. Someone died to bring your healing, to perfect your healing. Someone died so that you will no longer be a curse. Someone died so that even when things are not working, you say, I am rich. Someone died so that as he leaves you, one who will live inside of you and coordinate your affairs will begin to control your spirit, will begin to control your mind. The battle of victory starts first in the mind. If you see yourself as defeated, if you see yourself as broke, if you see yourself as sick, if you see yourself as depressed, that is what you will be. Those are not my words. As a man thinketh, so is he. You have come to partake of the greatest blood of all, the most precious blood of all, the most potent blood of all. The children of Israel took a, a, a lamb and they sacrificed it and put it on their lamppost. They put it on their doorpost. The angel of death came and he flew over them. He did not touch them. Imagine you that is going to intake of that blood. What can touch you? What will kill you? What will limit you? What will take away your wealth? What can take away your life? What can take away your children? What can take away your resources? You have answered it by yourself. Celebrate Jesus in this place. He became free so that you will be free. Took the keys of hell so that you will be free. So that even if you have seen yourself as a nobody, he has given you every right to call yourself light. And I've told us before, a, something that is light is never hidden. You are not meant to be hidden. You are not meant to be hiding. You are not meant to be running. You are not made to be afraid. Do not be afraid. One for every single day of your life. 365 times is mentioned in scripture. One for every day. Anyone who is constantly afraid, there's a limit you will, you, you will not. In fact, there, there's a level you can't get to. Because there's a saying, if wealth is in the mouth of a lion, put your hand in there and take it. If you're afraid, can you take it? If you're afraid, won't you feel like you're inadequate to go to certain offices? Because you don't dress the part. Because you don't look the part. Because you don't speak proper English. You need to hear the English of some. I rest my case. If it's by English, right? If it is by qualification. Some of the greatest people went to public schools. They did not go to private schools. A lot of them are not professors. Come on now. A lot of them are not what? But when God is with you, Kai, Kalabahata, when God is in you, you'll be walking and they'll be gossiping. They'll be envious. But they do not know that there's something that you carry that makes you aware that you see this one trouble, now you go tired. Can we trend that hashtag? Now you go tired. Challenges come to make you better. They come to make you stronger. And that's why the last thing you want to do is look down on anybody, is laugh at anybody because they are down. You know why I love God? He loves to shock people. Hey. You too much. You too much. You that has been looked down upon by the reason of this communion today, you become the head. You that has been laughed at by the reason of this communion today, you become the head. Your children that they have called useless by the reason of this communion today, I use you as a point of contact. Whatever drug addiction, whatever alcoholic addiction, whatever addiction that 
that is happening in your life, let me tell you, the enemy is against you because of what you carry. Tell your neighbor, I carry something. I carry Jesus. The greatest blood of all. Let's rise to our feet. We have a prophet in the house. We have a prophet in the house that when he speaks, God honors his word. But the question is, like Elisha spoke, he gave them the word of God. He told them that you will win. You will take over all their wells. You will take over all their city. You will take over Moab. So it's, it's no longer a case of them bringing tribute. You will now control the warehouse of the tribute. But by one evil sacrifice, they ran away. Did the prophet speak a lie? Can we answer the question? Everything he told them came to pass. But at the last end of it, they ran away. What is that prophecy that has been hanging over your life? Be, if it is the reason of money that you have not achieved it, let the money begin to overflow in your hands. Let it begin to overflow in your bags. Let it begin to overflow in your pocket. If it is because of health, you have not actualized it. See, today you will run from here to area one. Whatever has been projected into you, you will vomit it here. Every son and daughter of divine hand of God are um, conquerors through Christ Jesus. So what do you confess when you leave his presence? When the prophet has spoke as God has directed, go and play your part. And not only play your part, leave your part. I know people who have come here, 12 years of looking for children, they did not get, but they came in here and they got it. They came in here and they got it. Have you observed that most times people that are interviewed for expectation, because the expectation is so high, a lot of the times they live here with a testimony. Do not see... If your expectation is like this, increase it. Right? I don't know anybody here that will say, I don't want to have too much money. If you don't want to have too much money, wave your hands. Oh, our hands are down. So you know what you need to do, right? Your faith must match that which you ask of as you partake of this. If you're here, you do not know the Lord Jesus as your Lord and Savior. How will his blood work for you? The reason why we can boast the way we boast and can speak the way we speak, it is of no other thing. It is not by our power. It is not by our might. It, it is not by anything that you can qualify or quantify. It is by the reason of Jesus. He said, do this in remembrance of me today. What part of him are you remembering? Are you remembering the part that was victorious? That he went into hell, collected the key and came out. Resurrected at the third day. Is that the part you are remembering? His blood is still active. His blood is still alive. So if you are here and you haven't made him your Lord and Savior, the question is, how will it work for you? How will it work for you? You want to live in victory? You need to know Jesus. You need to make him Lord over your life. And not just make him Lord over your life this week. And next week, as you leave church, you are doing something else. But make him Lord over your life. He begins to rule over your heart and your mind. Because a heart and a mind that Jesus is ruling over does not have envy. A mind and a heart that Jesus is ruling over does not have jealousy. A man and a heart that Jesus is ruling over does not have wickedness. You cannot smile with your neighbor and the very next day you are talking about that neighbor. You need to give your life. Am I talking to us? Yes, Say, Lord Jesus, place your hand on your heart as I pray with you. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my life and make me whole. I know that you died for me. Resurrected at the right hand of the Father. Interceding on my behalf. Wash me clean of all unrighteousness and make me whole. From today, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. And as I partake of this communion today, let your blood work for me. In Jesus' mighty name. 
Father, we thank you for today. Take all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen.